Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I want to talk about how to correct color temperature when you have two different color temperatures being cast in the same image. It happens all the time because our camera can only record one instance of Kelvin temperature at a time. But we can fool it in Adobe Camera Roll. And what I'm using here for this is two different methods. In the first one, I'm going to show you the adjustment brush. And in the second one, I'm going to show you how to do this with graduated filters in Adobe Camera Roll or Lightroom. So here's our before not a very good scene here it is after where we've manipulated the color temperatures in the image in two different ways to get more accurate renderings for color in our photos So recently, myself and Hudson Henry, one of my fellow photography buddies, were at Delicate Arch at sunset. And just before the sun was setting, we had a nice blue sky in the background. Now, this was a very blue sky. But the problem that's happening in this image is when we look at it as shot with that white balance, our camera is really placing a lot of heavy weight on the orangish colors in the image. And we can fix this. We can actually make this more orange or more red if we want to, to bring out some of those colors and this more blue. But before we get into that, I have to talk to you about what color temperature is and how it works in your camera before we can talk about how to edit it, okay? Because if you don't understand this basic principle, you're not going to be able to understand how this uh, works and why you need to do it. So just like our camera can only record one instance of light or one exposure value, okay? So the exposure value of zero or plus one or plus two, so on and so forth, our camera can also only record one Kelvin temperature at a time for the whole given scene. Now, unless we're using apps or something to modify that, that's typically how a camera works. If you're shooting in RAW, it doesn't actually record the temperature. It gives you a JPEG preview of what its uh, temperature would be based on the white balance that you're in. With that being said, do I always shoot in the appropriate white balance for what I'm shooting? Absolutely not. I actually shoot in auto white balance because of the way a raw file works. It records the color data, but doesn't necessarily give me a white balance for that. In JPEG though, that's different. In JPEG, it will actually record that white balance and you don't have a whole lot of leeway to play. Every light gives off a different degree of Kelvin, whether that's from zero degrees to 1200 degrees or 12,000 degrees. Every light gives off a different uh, temperature for degrees Kelvin. So in this instance, when we look at this image, we have a nice uh, orangish, reddish, yellowish type of rock structure here. And our background it needs to be more blue because that was a very blue sky. But just before the sun was setting, it was nice and blue up here. What happens though, is if I move this temperature slider over to make that more blue, look at the sacrifice. I'm now missing out on all of this beautiful orange and yellowish rock that we see in the delicate arch. And that's what makes it so beautiful are these red colors. If I were to go over here to bring out more of that reddish orange, look what happens to the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in as shot. And there's really two ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you both of those ways. The first way is to come up here, whether you're in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, and go to the Adjustment Brush. K is the hotkey for that. What I want you to do is I want you to come down here to where it says Mask. Click on that. I set my mask to a nice magenta color because typically magenta doesn't exist in our images and it's a beautiful way to show uh, what exactly it is that we're uh, selecting here with, with our uh, brush tool. The opacity, I usually set that between 75% and 100% and I want the color to indicate the areas that I'm going to select, not the areas that are not selected. Okay, You can change that at any time though. You can make the unaffected areas actually be uh, masked in, in magenta if you'd like. I'm going to press OK. Now we need to go down here and turn this mask feature on. This will toggle the visibility of our mask. And you can see that there's a hotkey here. V is the hotkey to show us that overlay or not. The size of the brush is going to be dictated down here, but we can also press the right bracket key and the left bracket key. What you'll notice that in that brush, there's a band in the middle. That's the feathering. If we were to move the feathering down, you'll see that that band gets smaller. Now there is a hotkey for that band. So that instead of coming down here to feather it and move that around and lose your brush here, you can press shift and alt or shift and option on a Mac. And then the left bracket key to make that feather smaller or the right bracket key to make that feather bigger. I like to use a anywhere from a 90 to 100 feather on this and a decent sized brush. I don't want to go too huge. 
So now what I can do is I can set this color temperature up here. So what I need to do before, I don't want any of these settings to be set here. So I'm gonna press the negative on this temperature so that now I know that when I brush this in, it's just gonna make all of this area more blue. So I'm gonna start brushing here. And if you notice that I have this auto mask feature set, that's why sometimes the clouds don't get selected unless you click them one or two times. And that's okay. The auto mask feature is great because look what happens as I get close to this edge. As I get close to the edge, the auto mask feature is going to kick in and say, wait a second. I think based on the pixels that you're telling me to select that you don't want me to select uh, anything outside of that range. That's why uh, some of the areas are being protected here. Now, these mountains in the background, I'm not going to get too nitpicky with this because actually I do want some of these areas to blend pretty well. So at this point, I can turn that mask off because I've got a really decent mask here for that sky area. And when I turn that mask off, I now have my sky separate from my foreground. Beautiful way to separate that. Very easy, very quick. The awesome part about this is that now I also have my highlights and my shadows adjustments and all the other adjustments down here as well. If I want to drop the clarity to maybe make those clouds a little bit more fuzzy, I could do that as well too. So there's, there's a really good reason to separate these and not just for the color temperature, but also for the highlights and the shadows and the contrast or the exposure, or however you want to separate those. So then the, the next idea is, well, how do we get another color temperature for the rock? So I'm going to go up here and press new. And then I'm going to press the plus sign. Notice that when I press new, this little pin went from being open to kind of closed. That's basically telling me that we're starting a new brush right now. So I'm going to press the plus sign on here to get this to be a little bit more in the yellow range. And again, I'm going to make sure that my mask is set. My sizes are all good from the last time. So I can just come in here and just start selecting this area. If it starts to get some of those rocks in the background, that's okay with me too. And the reason why is because those rocks might be a very similar color temperature as the arch that I'm selecting here. So it's okay if they get selected a little bit as well. That works just fine with me. Okay. So now I'm going to turn that mask off and here, I've boosted that color temperature of those rocks to make them a little bit more on the yellow side. The sun was coming in. It was casting a beautiful yellowish gold kind of amber look on the side of this rock. And it, in one exposure, just didn't look very right. Okay. So now we can also maybe drop those shadows to exaggerate some of the shadowy area there. Maybe even boost up those highlights to bring out some of that and maybe bring in some of that contrast as well. So now if we look at our before and after of what we've done here, here's the before and here's the after. That's the first way. The second way might find a little bit easier, and that is to use up here. This is the graduated filter. And with the graduated filter, we'll turn that mask on just as usual, and we'll make sure that we've got a nice magenta color set and our opacities right there. And we can bring this down like this. This will give you a feathering edge. If you drag this up, it'll make your feather larger and smaller. So you can see how this feathering edge is coming in here. So I'm feathering that in. Maybe uh, I want this to transition a little bit more smoothly. Instead of being abrupt like we had with the brush, we can make this feather smoothly or angle it as we see fit. So I'm going to angle it slightly like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase that color temperature, actually decrease it to that blue range there, and then turn that mask off. So if you notice here, we are now decreasing that color temperature. But what's happening in the process is it's getting on the side of this rock. That's okay because Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom gives us the ability to brush on a graduated filter. So I can select the brush tool here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start painting in here. If by chance I get a little too much, I can press Alt or Option and click in there and start to reveal some more of that area that we want to get selected there. But I'm just going to go ahead and paint away this arch inside the graduated filter so that everything else in the background can be nice and graduated. But this is going to be protected. Our rock structure, our delicate arch is going to be protected. And again, if you see here, the reason why it's not going outside of that is I have auto mask selected. If I didn't have auto mask selected, this is what would happen. It would just, it's like a free form brush. Okay. So I can undo that mask and look at what's happening now with my color temperature. So notice how some of the mountains are, are now in that color temperature. This gives us a more natural transition from the top of the sky to the bottom. And likewise, if we want to make a new one, we'll make a whole new graduated adjustment here. And maybe we'll just plus this up and we'll, we'll do something like this. We'll bring this up like this. And we'll look at our mask here to see what we're affecting. And it comes up right to the top of this arch like this. But let's say we did not want that to affect our sky. Well, we have our brush. Okay. What I would do here first is probably feather this a little bit more and then come into my brush 
and then paint away these areas. But again, I'm not set to auto mask. So look what's happening. It's not making a very good transition. If I press Command or Control Z, that'll get me back. And then Control Alt Z will get me back to having a full mask. I'll use that auto mask feature and just start masking away some of this area so that our sky area is not being affected by that other color temperature or the yellow color temperature. Turn that mask off. And now you see that we have a nice, more smooth transition between the foreground and the background, and we're changing those color temperatures as we see fit here. And we can make that a little bit more on the reddish side by adding some magenta to that. And we've got some really nice color that's happening in our foreground and our background. At any time, you can click on these. If we go to edit and click on edit, you can click any one of these gra graduated filters, or you can click on any one of those brushes and change them as you would like to do so. So if we go back to the basic panel here, our white balance hasn't changed at all. We haven't changed any of this and we haven't changed any of these settings here. Instead, we've gone into some more intricate areas and modified those colors with very selective tools, either using the brush or the graduated filter tool right here in Adobe Camera Raw. I can't tell you how important it is to understand this idea of color temperature and how various things can be giving you multiple color temperatures in your image, but your camera can only capture one instance of color temperature at a time. So it's really important to fix these things. I do a lot of critique sessions on F64 Elite, and I notice a lot of images where they have bumped up that color temperature to really bring out the yellows and the oranges in their image, but then their sky looks all flat and dull when it should be nice, bright, and blue. So if you want to bring that stuff back, you're going to have to do some selective color temperature editing in your images. If you like videos like this, please do me a huge favor and subscribe. If you click that subscribe button and then hit the little bell for notifications, you'll get updates when all my new tutorials hit my YouTube channel. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like it, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend because this stuff is really cool when you start getting really intricate uh, selections for your color temperatures. I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial and pursue your creative endeavors. Thanks.